Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to one more Outriders video. So, on today's video we want to take a look at few things, a uh, few settings, and things that game doesn't tell you that might help you out a lot on the demo and especially to prepare to the full game. So there is something about the mods, there is few things about epic gear that you can get right now on the demo if you are lucky enough. So if all of that interests you, a like on the video would be super appreciated and let's get into this. So first things first, I want to talk about the mod system in our riders. Now, our rider has what seems to be a crazy and super fun crafting system that's coming on the full game. And part of that crafting system is the mods that you can apply to different guns and gears. And mods take a huge part of the whole build system on our riders. So it's needless to say, farming for these mods in the demo is one of the best things that you can do to prepare to the full game. And there is a 350 mod in this game as far as what the developers told us so there is tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 mods now the tier 1 is what we're gonna find the most because we can find them on blue gear the tier 2 mods they're only gonna start appearing on purple gear or epic rarity gear if you want to call it that and then tier 3 that's a mod you can only find on legendary gear that a lot of people been farming right now now as I said, you can save these mods in a library and then on the future use it on the full game to apply to anything else. So now, how do you do that? How do you save these mods? So what you have to do is basically go over a gear that has a mod. For example, this one right here, if I mark it for dismantle and hover over the dismantle button right here on the bottom, it tells you exactly what you're going to get from that gear that I'm going to be dismantling. So I get resources, charts and that mod right there in the bottom. So that's the importance of farming everything on this demo to get the most out of it. So now, how do you know if you have this mod or not? Because you, we don't have that crafting system or the crafting library just yet. Now that's actually pretty simple. So taking a look at this shotgun that I have right now equipped. If you take a look, it has the talent freezing bullets. Now on the right side of it, there is this square symbol next to the description of that mod. And that my friends, it tells me that I already have that mod on my library. So just for example, if I mark this shotgun for dissembling, you see it has that square symbol next to that mod. If I hover over the dismantle marked button, you see it's not going to give me any mod because I already have that one. So that's how I know I have all of the mods that has the square. Moving on, the next thing I want to talk about is another symbol that you can find on your gear and weapons, which is called the charts. Now, these symbols, you can find them next to your stats or attribute on your gear and weapons. For example, on gear, you can find them on max health, you can find them on anomaly power, and also you can find them on bonus fire power. On weapons, it can be things like armor piercer, we have crit damage, and even weapon leech life. All of that stats that you can have on your weapon and gear you might find a chart next to it. So again, dismantling a weapon or gear gives you mods, resources, and also charts for your library. So when the full game comes and you have the full access to the crafting system, you're gonna be able to use these charts to optimize your gear and get that uh, stats all the way to the max level that it can be, right? So that's where the charts come in, is to mid-max your gear, to mid-max that stat that you wanna get the highest possible. So right now on the demo, the best thing you can do, again, is go and farm gear and dismantling to get all of the resources, charts and mods to get ready for the full game. Now a mistake that I see a lot of people doing, it's not picking up green gear. They're only choosing to pick up blue gear because of the mods. Now the thing is, even green gear has these charts applied to them. So my best recommendation is actually picking up everything from the floor. Not only blue, but also green gear to be able to dismantle and to get as much of those charts as possible for your crafting when you are able to access that on the full game. Now moving on for the next topic, I want to talk about epic gear. So as you guys know on the demo, the most that we can find are blue gear 
and some of you are lucky enough to get legendary so epic gear doesn't seem like a lot of people have it but it is actual epic gear on the demo now the best way and actually i guess the only way that you can find them right now are through these vendors right here so we have the eva which sells weapons and we have Gregor that will sell you just gear. Now, one of my followers over on Discord sent me a picture of two items of purple rarity. One weapon and one gear that he found over on these vendors. So there is a possibility of getting purple from these vendors. Just keep on looking. From time to time, they might have a purple gear in there. You just gotta be lucky enough to find it at the right time and grab those purple gears. Because they do come with two mods instead of one. And besides legendary, they are the only way that you can access those tier 2 mods for the game. Now, next thing I want to talk about is about the word tier. So, this game has about 15 word tiers. And every time you go up in one word tier, you will get a reward. And the quality of that reward gets higher as you go up in more word tiers. So, make sure you go actually on your word tier and pick up your rewards that you have in there waiting for you before you get to the full game so you don't forget them in the demo. So next thing I want to talk about is about the combat system in this game. So I've seen a lot of players, especially a lot of my community, which is the division, trying to play this game as a cover based shooter. And this game is heavily advertised as a not a cover based shooter. It's about to stay in the middle of the fight, get involved and get your enemies killed. Because the way of healing on this game is about killing enemies. All of the four classes have a different way of healing, but they are involved about killing your enemies. For example, the trickster, if I get involved on the face of the enemy, I am super squishy, but as long as I'm killing fast, I'm getting my heal and my shield fast. That's what's gonna keep me alive instead of playing on cover. Because you would think by being squishy, I would stay on cover, but no, actually, Staying on the middle of it and killing the enemies fast, that's the best way that I can survive playing the trickster. So for all of the division players out there, if you play this as a cover based shooter, you playing it wrong. Now I know the cover is there, so why not utilize it? But I think that's not the way to use it. Because if you think about it, you think about the builds, the, the mods and everything, the game just forces you kinda to play aggressive. So play aggressive is the best way to play this game. So those are my two cents on that. Um, I know a lot of people complain about the cover system and they wanna play the cover on the game that's not supposed to be played as a cover based shooter. So following up with the gameplay topic, the next thing I want to talk about is about the role system on this game. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the same for controllers, but on keyboard, if you double tap on a any of the directional keys for moving your character, you will roll your character. Now, that's actually throw me off a lot in the beginning, but there is a option to disable that in the menu. So if you go on your menu, go on settings, right on options, go over here on control, and over on this left side it says double press to roll and you can turn that off I had to do that as soon as I saw that because that throws me off so if you play on PC if you play with a mouse and keyboard maybe that's an option that you can turn off to help you out because I've seen some people just rolling out of nowhere I bet you they are just double pressing the button to go forward and they don't know what's going on so that's what you should do right now and that's it guys, that's all I have for you guys for today on this video. I hope this video was helpful enough for you guys to know more about the game. So, if this video was helpful enough, a like on the video would be super appreciated. If you are new to the channel, subscribe for more, because we're gonna have more Outriders in the channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.